Welcome to Tecmo Tuesday. And welcome to the playoffs. We are in the wild card round of the playoffs. We have earned a bye in the first round, so we will not be playing this week. Instead, we're just going to sit back and, you know, crack open a cold one and enjoy the action. That's, uh, you know, the virtues of getting yourself a bye in the playoffs. So we'll be taking on the winner of Cardinals-Vikings. But there are three other matchups to to go through. I'm going to go through. I'm going to watch. Oh, shit. You know what I meant to do? All right. Seahawks, Colts, Cardinals, Vikings. I meant to uh, make these computer opponents. So, you know, these games will actually we'll be able to watch them. Uh, God, what were the other two matchups? Patriots, Bills, Saints, Rams. Divisional matchups. So if you're not interested in this, um, you know, you don't want to watch a game that I have nothing to do with. No problem. Just, you know, X out of here and we'll see you next time. But for those who do want to see some uh, neutral football where it doesn't fucking matter who wins, this is for you. And even though, you know, it's like I'm not, uh, you know, anywhere near as emotionally invested into, you know, Tecmo football or video game football in general as I am in real life, it's still nice to, you know, be able to just uh, kick back and, 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 and watch the games. So... And there you have your first down. Seahawks in... I, again, I, th I'll, I, I said it a few weeks ago, or might have, maybe even last week, that I was rooting for the Seahawks. I was rooting, for the, as far as the AFC goes, rooting for the Seahawks uh, because I think it would be funny to see a Super Bowl matchup between the Bucks and Seahawks, the two teams that came into the league together in 1976. In only the third year. I mean, it was kind of ridiculous uh, that we were able to accomplish getting to and winning the Super Bowl as an as an expansion team in year one, especially with a team like the Bucks, who were historically bad. But that was the whole point of this exercise, the, the Tecmo Tuesday in the first place, was to take a team that was uh, is absolutely dog shit and take them all the way to the Super Bowl. A Seahawks Bucks Super Bowl in this scenario, even if uh, you know. Not even counting the fact that the Bucks, uh, that you know, us as the Bucks had gone through and won. Anyway, field goal attempt here for the Seahawks, and that shit is wide right. Uh, it would be a lot like um, what 1996 could have been when the Panthers and Jaguars, who had just come in the year prior, both made it to the conference title game, and I was rooting so hard for that matchup to happen. It would have been just so cool and ridiculous. Like, you're not supposed to be that good that quick. It's like you haven't paid your dues, but, you know, they they did it. They went through and they won the games. You earned those wins. Anyway, we got Burt Jones here throwing to an open uh, Dowdy? Well, whoever he is, he's hurt. So that was the first casualty of the playoffs this season. You know, I, I, I probably should have checked just for shits and giggles to say, Oh, there's a pick! So the Seahawks uh, stop the threat of the Colts, and they get an interception in the end zone. That is demoralizing, and uh, it really can get the momentum on your side. And a nice jumping catch by Smith, taking the ball to around midfield. And a first down for the Seahawks. They drove the ball before while I was going on and on about, you know, the Seahawks and Bucks. How they came into the league together, all that bullshit. And basically talked over the whole drive. And off the Sims is going to be a third and medium here. 
for Zorn, who would go on to coach the Washington Redskins uh, later on. And that is going to be... Oh, we'll never know whether or not that would have been a first down because it's a fumble and Blackwood recovers. The Colts take the ball in this first quarter, which is... It's, there's still two seconds left in it, but it's been uh, miscues all over the place in that first quarter. You had a missed field goal. You had uh, two turnovers. And that was, that's pretty much been the first quarter so far. It's, you know, mistakes can really fuck you up. And you're bound to get more of that kind of shit in the wild card games. Those, those, those wacky games. Especially nowadays, because, you know, they add in the, uh, the extra wild card team. There's more wild card games. And there's, uh, with the talent pool more spread out than it was back in the day. You know, there's, uh, more leveled mediocre teams than there used to be where it was, you know, used to be more top-heavy. Jones going and it's, it's out of bounds. Jones is going to run it. He's got a chance and he's going to get taken down at the three. So that is going to set up for a field goal. This will be the... Uh, Second field goal attempt of the game for either team, and that one's going to go through. Nice little chip shot there to get the first points of the game and of the playoffs on the board. So the Colts were able to capitalize on the turnover, unlike the Seahawks, who turned the ball over themselves. So Zorn's got a chance here to uh, redeem himself. Oh, well, Sims is the one who fumbled. Oh, I believe, or was it Smith? I, I, I don't remember. I know that they ran in that direction, but there's a run that they each have to that side, so I don't know. I'll have to go back and check later. Largent, one of the best receivers of all time. It ended up as the leading receiver, the uh, all-time leading receiver for a while. In a lot of categories. Until somebody who uh, went by the name of, uh, what was it again? Oh yeah, Jerry Rice came along and just uh, reinvented the whole fucking position. Block. So the Seahawks going to have third and long. He's going deep from McCollum, and that shit is caught in a crowd. There were, well, there was one guy who wasn't really, uh, he, he, he had gotten behind, but there was another safety that was right up his ass. Still enough distractions and disruptions. Uh, there's, there's no business making that catch, but he earned it. Yeah, I was on, you live by the sword, you die by the sword. That could have been a pick. So second and four, or second and goal from the four. And Smith is going to take that one into the end zone. So they uh, they did redeem themselves. Sherman Smith gets the tutty. And the extra point gives Seattle a four-point lead. Some pretty good field position here for the Colts. Lee goes absolutely nowhere. And there's not really a lot of time to, to waste here, so this, the Colts need to be a little more urgent than this. But, uh, oh wow, they faked it. I was thinking to myself, why are you running up the middle? Kind of a weird time to be play faking, but that is a catch, and that is going to be a first down. The Colts are going to kick a field goal here. They're not going to even attempt another play. 18 seconds left. It, it is kind of... It, you could get a playoff, especially with only 15 yards to go. But they're going to just kick it, get the points, 7-6. to six. You know, they're grateful to be down 1 rather than being down 4, which is where it was looking like. You know, the, it was under a minute left after the uh, kickoff in the half. It wasn't looking like there was going to be any uh, chance at some points, but they got them, and <clears throat> every little bit helps, especially early on. You, you, you kind of want to take the points because... You don't know what it's gonna be like, what kind of game it's gonna be like. It's very tempting to go to to, to go for it on fourth and short sometimes. Even like you know, in your own territory, it's uh, you know. 
but it's the risk reward f uh, factor. You know, if you go for it in the midfield area in your own territory, and you even if you get it, you're not really guaranteeing that you're score you're getting points. So, you know, it's high risk, but is it is the reward really high? You don't know until you until you go through with it, though. Well, so Washington makes the catch, and he's got that ball past the 50. And the Colts are looking like they might be in business here. They're starting to move the ball. They got wide open guys all over the place, and Siani is going to make. <laughs> no, he's not going to make the catch. He dropped it. He had. He had it. He was. He must have taken his eye off the ball. He's too worried about what maybe with celebration he's going to do in the end zone because he had a clear path. There's no need. There's no need to worry about you know anybody in front of you when you're wide fucking open like that. Followed by an incomplete pass and now a blitz and the Seahawks are going to take him down in the backfield. Boy, you know that's they got to feel sick. If you're a Colts fan right now. I don't mean, you know, literally, if you're a Colts fan. I mean, a Colts fan in this universe, in this game's universe, has got to be sick to your stomach. And maybe even a Colts fan in real life, you know, if you're sitting there rooting for these, for your team in these games, you know, that sucks. You know, you, put, you, you, you have a chance to get the lead back. So Smith runs it this time, third and six. Big third down here as we're about halfway through the third quarter. Zorn fakes the handoff, and he throws it out of bounds. That was intended for a receiver who was double covered, would have, made me, made, would have needed to make a diving catch, and the ball was fucking out of bounds anyway, so there was no way that that completion was going to happen. I guess maybe he was trying to throw it away, but there were, you know, there was a lot of pressure. I didn't, uh, I didn't see it. So the Colts get the ball, and they, uh, you know, why that field goal was important? They could take the lead with a field goal here, as opposed to being down one if they had left the points on the board at the half. Jones drops back. He steps up into the pocket. He's going to run with it, and he's going to get the first down. As we have hit the one-minute mark of the third quarter, six minutes left in the game. Jones with that play fake. He's going for Washington. He was covered by three guys. That was dangerous as hell. Is this, it can, nope, he doesn't. I mean, it wasn't like that was his fault. I was going to say, could Siani uh, redeem himself? So Seahawks get the ball to start the fourth. They have a one-point lead. Very tight game. Very defensive. And here's some more defense for you. Nice blitz there. Right on target. They called the play exact. Zorn's going for Largen, and he is going to overthrow him. Damn, once again, you know, it's been rough for these quarterbacks in this game. They've had a few plays like that, including the Jones on the last drive. And there is going to be a sack by Simonini. Simonini? Simonini? I don't know. I'm not as familiar with these 1970s rosters as I am with the... Uh, with the 80s and, and certainly the 90s. Which was when I grew up. And, and got into football in the early 90s. Washington takes the handoff and he is going to go nowhere. It really, this is nut cutting time here. There's three and a half minutes left. And another blitz and now it's third and a mile. It's like, oh, Jesus Christ, It's pro you're probably going to have to punt it here if you don't get any yardage. And, and that was a terrible decision to throw it short, behind line of scrimmage even, 
and in coverage. It's like if he makes that catch, he's probably going to lose even more yardage. So, yeah, they're going to punt it. They had a guy that he could have dumped it off to and then maybe got a first down or at least put you in position where you were close enough for the first down to go for it. That would have been the right move. I was looking right at him and saying, okay, he's the guy you got to throw to. But, um, you know, they, they decided to check it down even further to the, to the line of scrimmage. That was a bad move. Zorn has got another incompletion, another overthrow, just misfires out the yin-yang. Smith takes the handoff, and he is going to get most of the yards needed for the first down. Third and two, and now the Colts are taking timeouts. A first down here would be huge, but they're going to get a blitz, and it will be fourth down, and the Colts take a timeout. They don't really need to because they're going to punt it right now. So here it is. Game is on the line. They only need a field goal, so they don't have to drive all the way down the field. Again, that field goal at the end of the first half is vital. It, it makes this drive whole entirely different. They don't need to get nearly as many yards. It's like they cut down from what they needed by like 35 yards. Or more, even. I really don't know how good the kicker is. The handoff goes to Washington. I mean, there's time, but I wouldn't be taking too much of it. You know, you, I, I think I would be trying to make my way down there with, some, with a little bit more urgency than this. Jones drops back. He's got a couple of guys. He's going to check it down to Washington. He gets it to the 35, the 40, to the... 41 yard line 32 seconds there's still time definitely to get to within field goal range and there's a play fake he's going to throw he's going deep for Carr and he's got him he has got him and that is going to be a touchdown in the waning seconds of the game there are four left and Roger Carr has the touchdown that is going to very likely be the game winner I mean the Seahawks are going to have to get a return touchdown which does not happen in this game. Not in a computer versus computer matchup. Even with a short kick like this. It's like they gave him a chance and said, you know, here is a pity. Uh... Oh, shit. <laughs> nope, it's, it's not going to happen. They tied him up. He made some moves, and there weren't a lot of guys behind in front of him. But they caught up to him. So, you know, they, uh, that would have just been the thing to shut me up. Uh... Bird Jones did have 237 yards passing. It didn't seem like it was that, that much. Zorn did struggle, though. Uh, he only completed 30% of his passes for 80 yards. Um, there was just a lot of misfires by, by Zorn in particular. But, hey, you know, they, the, you, you, uh, you stick with it, and it works out. And the Colts stuck with their game plan. They were... You know, that, that, that field goal they got at the end of the first half didn't turn out to mean as much, but it might all, maybe the uh, Seahawks would have played their defense a little bit differently in that situation. They wouldn't have, they wouldn't have, they, maybe they would have dropped for more people back. Anyway, Cardinals and Vikings, this game will determine our opponent in the divisional round. <clears throat> and I don't know what year it was. There was somewhere, somewhere back in uh, in, the, in the 70s, it was one of Hart's teams that made it to the playoffs. I think it was maybe in 76. Or say maybe 77. I don't think 78 Cardinals made the playoffs. But the 78 Cardinals here, are they're giving up a long-ass touch, uh, not touchdown, but a long-ass pass. But there's a fumble, and the Vikings manage to pick it back up and get a first down out of that. They keep the ball insane. It looked like it was going to be a touchdown. The defenders caught up to him, and then it was a fumble. It looked like it was going to be a turnover, but no, psych again. Right back the other way. So a roller coaster of emotions on the first play from scrimmage. Let's take it back a notch here, calm down, and just have some good old-fashioned run stuffs. I thought that was a blitz for a second. The defensive line was getting through pretty good. I think that this D-line is just uh, j just really good here for the Cardinals, the way that they, it started off. Targeting scrambles, which he was very good at, especially for the time. 
and he, but he does not get a first down, so the Vikings settle for a field goal to take the their first points of the game. You know, it, it was looking like they were going to, with that first play, just get right in the end zone right away. And then it also looked like they were going to get no points. So the compromise is three points. Hart back to throw. He's got guys covered. He's going to throw deep for Gray. And that uh, play was covered like a blanket. He's going deep. He wants to go to Gray again, and he got him to the 20, to the 15-ish. And that's a big first down for the cards. Hand off to Morris. I think and that's going to be a touchdown. I think that Otis Anderson, who is in Tech on Super Bowl, uh, on the Giants, of course, that was the team he won the Super Bowl with uh, twice. I, I, I don't think he's on the Cardinals here yet. I think he comes, I think he's a rookie at 79. So it's funny, he's one of like the old guard that who, who does show up in Tecmo. And around this time, which is a throwback to Tecmo, is like right about at that time. But OJ Simpson was is in this game because the, he was on the, Vi uh, on the Vikings, on the 49ers. So we went from one OJ to the next. After o o Otis, OJ Simpson, not Otis Simpson, OJ Simpson uh, retired, we ended up with OJ Otis Anderson, the other OJ, Otis Jerome. Tucker makes the catch, and Tucker is going to fumble. So the Cardinals do pick up this fumble. And if you're a Vikings fan here, you have to be worried about the Butterfingers. As John Hammond said, our lives are in your hands, and you have Butterfingers. So let's see if the Cardinals can take advantage, and that was a nice block. Hart is going deep for Tilly. He... Has got him in stride, and he is fucking fast, and he's in the end zone. Cardinals are building up a lead here, pretty pretty big lead. Fourteen to three. So the Vikings came out, you know, they came out in a house of fire. They had a deep ass pass that got them some yardage. It looked like it was gonna be a touchdown. Also looked like then it was going to be a turnover. And then the Cardinals came back with 14 unanswered points. Meanwhile, the Vikings get a big return on the way back. So this has all the makings of a potentially very exciting game. I do not uh, think it's out of the realm of possibility at all that the Vikings get back in this game. Particularly on this drive. Let's close up the half. But the Cardinals are going to say, nope, we don't want any of that shit. And uh, Sensabaugh has a sack here to force a third and long. Tarkenton actually has some time this time. He is going deep to Rashad for a touchdown. And what a catch. What a catch. Nice pass, nice catch, nice execution. And the Vikings are back in the game here with that one. I, I, I don't really, you know, I, I, it doesn't matter to me who wins. Um, you know, Vikings are a divisional rival. Although, you know, our legit rivalry wouldn't, uh, at this point, have commenced because, you know, the Bucks have barely been in the league. Although they did win the Super Bowl, so it's like Vikings who keep making it to the Super Bowl around this time but never able to win. They gotta be pissed. So, in, in this universe, that's a rivalry. But in real life, the Vikings and Bucks, when they were together in the Central, never really had a, like, a legit rivalry. It, it just the success of the Bucks didn't last long enough. And I think the Vikings were fading by the time the Buccaneers got good. So 
see what the Vikes do with the ball. And is he gonna get? He does. So they got hit all the Rashad again. He's been the man. in this game and the Vikings now have the lead just like that after you know the Cardinals ever since that fumble the Vikings got the big play they had the fumble but they kept the ball but that fumble seemed to like you know just spook them a little bit and the Cardinals went and headed toward 14 unanswered they took the momentum away everything was looking like it was going Cardinals and then the Vikings came and scored 14 unanswered back themselves Meanwhile, Hart is going deep for Tilly again, and he's got him in stride. This guy is fast, too. If we end up playing against these Cardinals, watch out for this guy. This game looks like it could be insane here. This is a fucking pinball machine. Jim Hart is uh, on fire, as is Tilly, as is Tarkenton, as is Rashad. 21-17, not even a halftime yet. There is time. With, with how these big plays have been going in this game, there's 18 seconds, you know, child's play. They could, uh, uh, if they, as long as they fall. No, not that. Ready, down. Hunt, 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 hunt. So that will be the half. The Vikings choose to go conservative there. Despite all the fireworks that have been going on and how confident you think they would be. If you're a Vikings fan there, you, you're like, why? Why would you do that? If you're a Cardinals fan, you're like, oh, we'll take it. We'll take it. We'll you know, take the ball here, too, to try to get the lead or extend the lead. Cardinals looking like they're gonna try to you know, run the ball here on this in the second half, change up the pace a little bit. Interesting. And there's Tilly again. He is just... Don't leave him open. Do not leave him open. I think I'm just going to cover him all the way. If I end up playing these guys. So Vikings have some work to do. Once again, you know, it's 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 like it's it goes back and forth with scoring 14 unanswered is been the pattern here. The Cardinals did it, then the Vikings did it, and the Cardinals did it again. So with that pattern, uh, then the Vikings should go up 31-28. In the next few minutes, Targeting fakes the handoff. He's going for Rashad, but oh, you know, he had to come back for it he, and ended up go walking right into some coverage. Coleman's gonna punt. And they could put this game away here. Um, more or less, you know, it's. I wouldn't say <clears throat> that they necessarily would have it. Doug Sutherland there with a, a very clutch sack. The Vikings need that. They need a. They need a turnover here, or at least a stop. You know, there's still plenty of time. This is the fourth quarter. It'll be a little bit different. Gray is going to be the intended recipient of this catch, and there the coverage there was good. So third and long for the Cardinals, and they're gonna run it. 
think they're trying to catch him off guard there. Maybe they're just trying to, like, you know, just move it up a little bit, play it safe, some shit like that. They knew the Vikings were going to possibly, you know, try do everything they could to get a turnover there. I think they'll just run it. I'd say that that, would, that was a very conservative move, especially considering the points that are... Uh, seem to be flying around the scoreboard here and and this is going to be a big run here for Foreman into Cardinal territory as the fourth quarter begins Ready, down. Hunt, 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 hunt. Tarkin drops back he throws to white across the middle and he's going to pick up some more yardage he is approaching the red zone as we're at the 441 mark of the regulation hand off to Foreman and he gets a couple of yards, second and four. You know, it's like this matriculating the ball down the field that isn't really what you want to be doing, especially with a sack by Yankowski. So this is a big third down here for the Vikes. It's quite a rush. He's going deep for Tucker, and he is picked. He is picked. He should have went to Rashad. I think Rashad was... He's either open or he was definitely seemed to be more open. Although that safety might have went back and cheated to that other side. Hilgenberg gets the sec. And the second half has been way more defensive than the first. These adjustments that they made, it seems like they're working. Nice catch there by Otis to make this more of a third and, uh, you know, third and more manageable for sure. Jim Hart is just waiting forever. He's going deep to Otis, and Otis makes the diving catch inside the 25, and that's going to eat up time, even with a timeout there. That just the fact that they got a whole other set of downs, they're going to eat up clock. Even if they don't get anywhere and they just kick a field goal, that's going to be huge. First down inside the 10, now it's first and goal. With 2.30 left, 2.32 to be exact. Um... It looks like this might be uh, iced. And now it absolutely is. Wayne Morris takes it into the end zone, and the Cardinals, who have been pretty much like on the heels of the Cowboys throughout the entire season, you know, they had something like, I, I don't remember the, if it's 11 and 5 or maybe 12 and 4. I think the Cardinals finished 11 and 5. But they were right behind the Cowboys all the way through, and they were one of the top. Um, they got the four seed because they were the top wild card, but they were definitely like good enough to be a division winner if they just ha didn't happen to be in the same division as the team that went on to get the home field advantage. So you know, by that metric, it shouldn't be a major surprise that the Cardinals went on to. Pull ahead and win this game, especially, you know, the snake-bitten Vikings. It's just the way it was for them in the 70s. They always put together a good season. And several times, four times to be exact, they would go on to the Super Bowl. And uh, that would be where it would, where it would finish. They just always laid an egg. In the Super Bowl, they got creamed by uh, the, the, by the Raiders in the last one that they appeared in. They got they got beat pretty good by the Chiefs, who were an AFL team, and it was not they weren't supposed to be winning that game. And then they they, they, they seemed to be pretty competitive against the Steelers, but oh, and there's a touchdown for Rashad to get the Vikings. That was a well covered uh, play by the defense, but just not enough. Problem is, it's a little too, a little too little, and a little too late. But we'll see. We see some crazy shit in Tecmo with this onside kick. I mean, there's not enough time. And Otis make. And not only did he make a, a an, an awesome diving catch toward the end of the game or on the last drive for the Cardinals, but uh, he also recovered the onside kick straight away. And that is the game. They let the clock tick mercifully, and the Cardinals win 35-24. You'd say, okay, maybe that game wasn't as close as the score would indicate because the Vikings scored a, essentially a garbage-time touchdown, but 
th th I think that this game was as close as the score indicated because it was close for a while. Cardinals pulled away in the second half, but it was a back and forth game in a weird way where it was streaky. The Cardinals had all kinds of momentum and they would score a couple touchdowns. The Vikings had all kinds of momentum and they scored a couple touchdowns and the Cardinals went back. It was a, a, a freaking pinball machine. It was crazy. That's it for that a playoff b battle. So we will see the S Seahawks. I'm sorry. The S we'll see the Steelers and the Colts in the divisional round. And we will, uh, like I said, we will be playing the Cardinals in the divisional round. But they we're not done yet with the wild card round. Pats and Bills here. Again, you know, this was uh, this is a rivalry. Game. This is a you know a, a divisional rivalry game, but. They, you know, hadn't really established a legit. Right. I mean, they 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 were in the same conference, same division in the AFL too. So like, they, yeah, they were divisional opponents. There was, you know, a rivalry of sorts. But you really become a rivalry when you, you know, both teams at the same time at some point, you know, either they find they meet each other in the playoffs or they, in in the case of a divisional rival, it's like you. And there's a fumble, and it's out of bounds. Um, it's when you're both battling for the division title or a playoff spot or whatever. Whenever, you know, you get two teams that are both good at the same time at some point, that's where rivalries are born. And there is a sack by Bishop. And the Pats will hold on fourth down in the first possession of this game. So the winner of this matchup will be taking on the San Diego Superchargers. They're going to fly out west from here. And then the Cowboys will host the winner of the um, Ram Saints game. And that is going to be a tipped pass. You know, that's, that animation pops up there sometimes, but when you see it happen and it doesn't cut away, it just looks like a nice block. That animation was a should-have-been interception. Especially when you give up a first down right after that in the form of a run by Johnson up the middle for, I don't know, about 20 yards, 25 maybe. Who the hell is Owen? Grogan was the quarterback at this time, wasn't he? Is, is somebody hurt? I should have checked the roster just to see who was healthy. But I'll tell you, Owen is not feeling healthy because he keeps getting... His ass sacked. He's dropping back. He wants to throw it right into a heap of fucking bills. What are you doing, man? And there's another blitz. And that could have been disastrous as he pitched the ball while there was an army blasting in his face. But he got it away just in time and, you know, picked up a few yards. So... Good on them. Not so good in that run. Another nice little pitch move. And a first down. Oh man, you saw Hamilton just come running up the gut there. Somebody missed a block. Somebody fucked up on their blocking assignment. Wide open is Chandler. <clears throat> you know, talk about blown coverages and fucked up assignments. That's what happened there. And the Bills strike first. All, you know, it doesn't matter what else is going on in the game. One play is all you need for something crazy to happen. Get points on the board to change the momentum to cause a ruckus. And, you know, it was like there was some bit of struggling to get a rhythm going on offense, and then all it took was just that one play. 7 nothing. you're in the lead now. See if Owen can lead the pass back to the other side. He's going to throw. He's, we're never going to know if, uh, if the, that receiver would have caught the ball because that pass is blocked. Eight seconds left in the quarter. This is going to be it for the quarter unless it's just like a freaking jailbreak, and it's not. Johnson takes the ball, and he's going to run it for about five yards. 
Seven nothing Bills at the end of one. The Pats have a third down here to work with. Owen drops back. Guys are covered. He is going to just to make an attempt for Stanley Morgan to make the catch, and he does not. That's a pick. And the Bills will get these in field position again. Pretty you know, good field position. 43. And there's that pitch again. And he's faking people out, Miller is. And then it took a second guy to bring him down. He was all tied up, and it didn't matter. Ferguson drops back. He's got some time. He doesn't have a lot of options. And that was a nice block. Uh, there was a... Uh, I don't know if it was a tight end, but there was somebody else that was uh, sitting there about halfway up the field, but he wanted it all. And then, as a result, did not get it. So, third and 13 for the Bills. Oh, almost got sacked. If he converts this, it's going to look bad. And he is not going to do that. There's a running back that was just kind of standing there watching it happen. Could have ran in there and threw a block, but no. So, we'll see here if the Bills can extend their lead. And they do not. Wide left. It's tough to kick field goals for the Bills in the postseason. It just always wants to sail to the you know wide of the goalposts. And there's another interception, man. Take this kid out. I mean, you can't. If he's subbing for Grogan, which I'm very sure he is, and you, it's like you have no other option. You can't put in an emergency quarterback. It does not let you put non-quarterbacks in as quarterback. You can put running backs in, and tight ends in receiving positions, and vice versa. You can do all kinds of mix matching, which is something that a lot of players like to do at Tecmo tournaments. They will, um, and there's a touchdown. They will sometimes, you know, put running backs in at the tight end spot because they like certain plays the way they they go. Plus, uh, there's some kind of glitch, and I think it's on a uh, it's on it's on returns. Your I think it's your free safety, your strong safety, one or the other. Their speed, their running speed, is matched up with your returner, no matter who you have in the lineup, because they're each taking place of one of the 11 men on the field. It's a whole like you know long winded. Thing that I don't even know the answer to, to be honest. But I'll tell you what I do know is that the Bills are up 14 to nothing, and the Patriots are licking their wounds and trying to get something going here. And that throw across the opposite side of the field to Stanley Morgan, who makes the catch inside the 40. That's a play right there that if it's real life, uh, all the Pats fans are just going apeshit because. Ooh, excuse me with a yawn. Um. You know, it's like, if you miss that and you have to punt, it's like you feel like your whole season's down the pisser. But they can score a touchdown on this drive and just turn the whole... And Morgan again with the catch. I was going to say, don't throw a pick after I'm over here uh, talking them into scoring touchdowns and getting back into the game with one play. Not that I'm, you know, not that I want to talk the Patriots into winning anything, including Tecmo. And I know this was a time when they weren't known for success yes believe me i know i remember i was that was not around for this time period but i remember that time period where the patriots were what they you know more or less are now field goal is good the pats get on the board and it is 14 to 3 bills and we are rapidly approaching the end of the first half only three seconds left. And a first down, just to pad some stats for Buffalo. So, they definitely controlled that game. The Pats, though, they they showed they can move the football. And they can make things happen. They just gotta, you know, punch it in. I don't even think I would be uh, kicking any field goals at all here if, I, if, I'm, if I'm New England. I'm... It still is going to be a two-score game. And there is you don't have to worry about it when your fucking guy fumbles. But manages to hang on to it. So that is the second fumble. Where the offensive fumbling team got it back. Going for Cunningham and a nice block. I tell you that front seven for the Bills. They're earning those paychecks. And the secondary, too. They've gotten, I don't even know how many picks. Like, two or three of them? Almost another one right there. 
Seemed like the receiver had to go in there and break up the interception. And there is a nice sack by Ben Williams. And that brings up 4th and 16. And the Patriots are punting, which, you know, makes sense. It's way too long to be able to think you can actually convert. You're giving your opponent all that field position. There's way too much time left. That pitch, the Patriots snuffed it out. That was working. Oh, shit. Terry Miller gets hurt, and that could derail things. Or at the very least, affect long-term what this team is going to look like throughout the rest of the postseason. Ready, down. Put, 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 put. Ready, down. Brown put, gets put, uh, put, put, <laughs> less than nothing. And they're going to run it with him again on third and long. They are just... Oh, and there's a fumble. They were doing it to play it safe. Get some more yards. Make it a, a you know, less of a punt they're going to have to blast. And it backfired. Now the Patriots have a chance to get right back into this. And they go and turn the fucking ball over themselves. And, and, the, and now the Bills are going to, like, you know, that was a very slow pokey run back. But it doesn't matter. You have the ball. And you just... Man, they... Handed you a beautiful cake, and then you just friggin' sat on it and ate it anyway. So third and five. The, 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 the game is moving pretty slowly. At least it seems that way just based on how many possessions. Here's another one. They held again. You gotta give credit to the defense. They're hanging in there. It seemed like they made the halftime adjustments. And now look at the difference in field position as opposed to where they were Ready, down. Put, 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 on the last drive. Owen drops back. He's going for Jackson. He's going way the hell deep for Jackson, and that was almost picked off. Ooh. That was rough. Johnson's going to get close to a first down, but not quite. There's too much. Uh, it was third and two. They gotta. This is four down territory. You gotta go for it if you don't make this. But whenever we'll never know because Cunningham made the moves, got the first down, and now it's okay. Five minutes left in the game, or regulation at least. Uh, he went deep for Jackson. Now he's taking all the chances in the world. And it's paying off. Who the fuck am I? I do not know what I'm talking about. And that's the trick here. You want, If you're the Patriots, you want to score quickly to conserve as much time as possible. You want a big play, like a deep ball to the end zone. And that right there is not going to do you any favors in any direction. Um, not that time is like extremely precious right now, but it's, you know, it's ticking. Clock's ticking. Not a lot of no, time to get. Oh, and there's another comeback. Moody makes the interception, and that's going to be it. In all extreme likelihood, unless we get like a crazy fumble. And a big return, some shit like that. Wow. Play fake, Ferguson drops back, throws it to nobody. And this D line for the Pats right in everybody's face. Can't fault them for that bad throw. Ready, down. Put, 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 put. And look at this again. That line, he's almost there. Almost there. And the, the defender almost there for the pick, too. Just in there to, enough to disrupt. That's what they've been doing. It's like a bend but don't break. Problem is, again, the offense just uh, not showing up, and Owen has been throwing interceptions. There have been fumbles. It's been pretty sloppy for the Pats offense. Ready, down. Put, 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 put. Just like in real life, as, as of the recording of this, uh, of this game. Ready, down. Put, 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 put. Hand off, and it's a first down. But again, excuse me. Too little, and definitely too late. It was too, it was too little even at the time. Like, you know, it's if you're winning, that's fine. If it's like 
extremely early in the game. That's another. And Jackson makes the diving catch. And it finally pays off going deep. It, it, it's not it's not over. And they're not going to hold him again, but they could get an onside kick. He's going for, back again for Jackson and just overthrows him. My God, he was wide open. You know, it's like underthrow him on purpose so you can guess to come back to it as long as... I miss a fumble and the cow the Cowboys. I'm looking at the you know the, the, the jerseys and not thinking about the fact that it's an AFC playoff game. I'm thinking Cowboys and Cardinals for some reason. I we just fucking watch the Cardinals game. And I, that, you know, and I'm thinking now too. It's like fuck. Did I did I call them Cardinals and Cowboys earlier? I know I've been going off and talking about other teams and other unrelated shit. But that was another. Oh, and there's a fumble. Are you shitting me? The Cardinals are going to get it back again, man. What a sloppy-ass game this is. And with 25 seconds left in the game, the Pats get finally get on the board, and they do it with their defense. Tim Fox recovers. It was all because it was the pitch. They fumbled it just by design of the play and, like, the poor execution of the play. Really, I think the defense blasted in there and, and, and caused it with the blitz. But it doesn't matter. It's a, It was a turnover. If the Pats recover this, this would be absolutely phenomenal. And they don't. Hooks gets his hooks in. And the Bills will go on to win this game. Are we going to get a return for a touchdown? No, we're not. To like the 13-yard line, something like that. So that's it for that game. Man, four interceptions for Owen. What the hell was that shit? Not a lot of yards on either side of the ball. But, uh, oof. I, I, I really thought with 80% of your... I mean, not 80%. I was looking at the yards and thinking that he threw for 80%. No, nobody cracked 30. This was rough. Uh, but you got to give credit to the defenses for, you know, at least doing their jobs at a decent average rate or so. Um, it's kind of curious. So, yeah. Uh, no, I wanted to see the Patriots. If, yeah, if Rogan is the starter, nor ordinarily, and it is Tom Owen who I have never heard of in my life. And we get one more game here. Saints and Rams, another game within the division. And we'll see how it goes. Much like these other games, I don't give a fuck about who wins this game. I'm not, I don't really have any rooting interest. Uh, I guess, you know, uh, let's see, like, who... I think when it comes to the 1970s, of course, I'm gonna say that the uh, you know the Rams were way more, way more of a memorable team than the Saints. The Saints uh, did not start getting playoff, even even making it to the playoffs until the 80s when Jim Mora came in and saved that franchise's soul by putting together some good teams. Never quite made it to the uh, Super Bowl or, or or even you know won a playoff game for that matter. But, you know, I'll, I'll, and, I'm, and I'm going off on more historical tangents here, but I'll always say that don't patrol uh, linebacking crew for the Saints during that 80s and early 90s era of the Saints. Fucking phenomenal, underrated. Four of them were pro bowlers in one season. All of your linebackers. Now, they ran a 3-4. All the linebackers went to the pro bowl. That's uh, a bit insane. They just had, you know, that, that was one of those teams, like I was mentioning earlier, who, um, I, I was, the Cardinals of this game, who were, like, a, a really strong team that finished second in their division. They were just victims of having another team in their division. The Saints, during that Jim Mora era, they just were as good as they were. They were a good team, a solid team, but they weren't expected to get anywhere, and they had to go on the road to the playoffs because of the fact they were in the same division as the 49ers who were not just the best team in that division throughout that time period, but the best team in the whole NFL. They were the team of the 80s. And there's a pick. Spencer gets the interception at the one. Yeah, so as far as decades of dominance go, yeah, 60s it was the Packers, 70s it was the Steelers, 80s it was the Niners. And the 90s, it was the Cowboys. And then the 2000s and the 2010s. Unfortunately, both of those fucking decades went to the Pats. I 
fucking have two, two fucking dynasties. Unbelievable. And it's you know I I'm a, I live in New England, so having to be surrounded by past fans who are uh, let's just say it's it's not so bad anymore. It's uh. It's gotten more tolerable, and you know, hopefully, this uh, you know latest generation who don't remember the time in, like 20 plus years ago when the Patriots were not good, more than 20 years now. Um, now you know what it's like. Now you know what it's like, and believe me, I'm a Raiders fan. It is goddamn rough. I'm not gonna go over examples because it may. By the time this episode airs, it, that will be that shit will be outdated, and there'll be like three or four more news stories of something going on. Somebody either uh, flipping that shit or, um, or just you know throwing people under the bus or some kind of discontent for their uh, coaching staff or something. Something will, like that will happen. So, anyway, I'm going off. I'm talking about everything except for the fucking game here. End of the first quarter, no score. So, I, you know, if, in case you're just tuning in, you haven't missed shit. And now the spot, the Saints are driving. So, here they are. And it's Archie Manning that's right. Here I am, like, you know, going on about yesteryear in general. And meanwhile, yesteryear is right in front of my fucking face. Muncie, who gets it to the one. And yes, Archie Manning. He's undoubtedly proud as hell of his sons. Who have gone to, uh, you know, win Super Bowls. Who win two Super Bowls each. And, you know, you're, you're going to be proud of your kids no matter what you did. It's like, you know, it's your kids. The Matthews brothers and, and the, the generations of Matthews. It was Clay Matthews, Sr., Jr., and the third. You know, it was in the blood. But you gotta think that, you know, Archie Manning, as proud as he is of his kids, there's gotta be that side of him that just looks at them and says, Why didn't I get one of those fucking rings? Like, Duh! Why was I a saint? He could have he could have been one of the great quarterbacks, but you know, he was unfortunately saddled up with an unfortunate team at the time. Anyway, Rams have the ball at the 35, they're trailing 7 0. You got Hayden running into a brick wall. He gets the first down. Now he's at the ten. Now he's at the I know he's not the 10, it was the 20. Now he's at the 16. My math is not correct. And nor do I seem to be able to recognize numbers because guess what? They're on the fucking field. Yeah. Hand off to Bryant. He's got some potential uh, there, but he gets the traffic closes up. And at third and five, this is going to be huge. We could see the game get tied. We could see a 7-3. And it's, yeah, he's not. He's not even close. That's a fourth down. They have to kick it. Still plenty of time too for the Saints to get some points in retaliation for this. And he sneaks it through. That was not a gimme, not in the slightest. Yeah. That coverage team just swarmed in on them there. Archie back to throw. He's in the end zone. He's throwing it to a Saint who was on his way back. I think it went off his helmet. Manning hanging out in the end zone. He's going to get rid of this shit. Makes the catch. There's a fumble. And the Rams have the ball. And the Rams are in business. They now have a legit... And that was almost a... Well, I'm making a jab. This is going to go right for the points right here. There's time, though. You know, it's like I look at this and I'm thinking, ah, there's time. But, you know, the computer doesn't... Oh, and they missed it. Oh. That was a chip shot. 
they get to Muncie, he's just gonna be like, alright, let this time tick, but, you know, they're the calling a play, we'll see what happens. They just hand up to Muncie, yeah, they're, they're not interested in scoring points, uh, I mean, I guess they're interested, of course, but I mean, <clears throat> they're not gonna tip their caps to anything, they're just like, alright, you know, dude, what... why risk it, you know? So the winner of this game will battle Dallas. And meanwhile, we'll be taking on the Cardinals. And that's your NFC, you know, tree of what it looks like at this moment. This is a toss to Galbry. Third and three. Let's see how this goes. Ooh. Nice defensive stop by, by the Rams. <clears throat> Blanchard. That's 25 to the 30. Makes some nice little moves to the 35. About the 38-yard line. So that's a big return there for the Rams, and they are they're down four. They could only be down one if they had, you know, uh, snuck that kick in. That's incomplete. And a catch in a crowd by Jesse and the Rippers. First down for the Rams. Drop back. He's got a guy in the middle he could go to. He's gonna run it himself. Seems to be the thing. Like, okay, this is what's working in this game. Let me just run it in myself. And there you have it. Pat Hayden scores, and the Rams take their first lead of the game. I think. Don't quote me. See, it's like, do not insist that I'm some kind of a history book. Uh, or any of that. I'm all over the fucking place myself. So the Saints have to uh, get that momentum back. They just had a turnover. They gave up the touchdown. Could have thrown it deeper, but he decided to check it down to Galbraith, and he's going to get the first down. Inside the 30 to about the 28. He throws it into a crowd. That could have been a lot, lot worse. Come on, you're down. You don't take risks like that. Not on second down. Oh, he's going for the end zone. He had other guys open. But he chose to throw it to the guy who was covered. The one guy. Third and ten with 22 seconds left in the third. And that is going to once... Well, I mean, it wouldn't matter. It's the end of the third. He's up and it's good. Ten to ten. We are deadlocked. with the return he goes down so here it is folks this is all the twix and marbles and there's a first down for the rams You know, I'm sure somebody has said this by now, but that Toy Story game broadcast they did with the, you know, the toys and shit that was in synced up with the game, well, they should do that with Tecmo Super Bowl. I would watch that every single day that they, every, for every game that gets aired, whatever. So the Saints make the stop, they force a punt. 
And the Saints, who were trailing... There's not a couple lead changes in this game, but the Saints were... Uh, they were trailing before they tied it on my last drive, and now they've got a chance with the ball. The ball in Archie Manning's hands. Going deep for... Ch oh, nice block. Oh, that was a nice block. Just at the right time to do it. And there's a fumble, and the... All oh, those Saints, I was saying the round. I didn't see a single fucking Saint over there. So, the Saints recover the ball, but it is third and a mile. Still, it's better to have the ball. Even if all you do is this, just run the ball and get it. For oh my god, they got the first down. Yeah, that was some that was some shit tackling by the Rams right there. You do not let a man like that just like run the ball for 19 yards. They were looking to just run out some clock, get some yardage to make the punt easier, all that shit. It's blocked. He throws it to Muncie. He takes it to about the 48. So there's definitely time. They don't have to get very far. Though, like I said, I don't know shit from Shanawa about the quality of these kickers. Um, and a nice play by that defender. He was covering the man that was closer to the quarterback. And then I don't know if the, you know, like, the, the quarterback stood him uh, or, or, you know, if it was Archie staring at him. And there's a fumble and uh, the Rams got it back. I, that one went out of bounds and it rolled back in. I'm pretty sure. So the Rams have the ball now. They gonna have it are gonna have a chance with less than a minute and a half to take the lead, and they throw it to Jesse immediately a touchdown. That right there is how you take advantage of a turnover. You go right for the end zone. Always loved doing that. Not every single time because you know, especially when you're playing against other people, they're gonna know what the hell you're gonna be doing. But um, I love. The, if it's there, I love the whole throw it deep and over time if you got a man. So Chandler takes the ball out, and the Saints are going to need a touchdown in basically one play. And it's not going to do with this fucking play action shit. Owens makes the catch. One of the other Owens is. is, is, is. Or it's Owen the Pats. Anyway, this is going to be the last play of regulation. And it's a blitz. They knew what was coming. They got the sack by Brzezinski. And the clock ticks. Strikes midnight. And that is the end of it. The Rams win 17-10. to With they, they get the heroic touchdown. They put the game away. And, you know, it's uh, more or less an even matchup, an evenly executed matchup. It was even. It was literally 10-10. to 10. The Rams pulled away at the end. That fumble was huge and controversial. Who would have thought that a playoff game between the Saints and the Rams, you'd have the argument that the Saints got screwed over by the refs who made a dumb call, like that ball landing inbounds. I mean, that looked like it was out of bounds to me. I don't know, I'll have to check the replay on that one. But that is it for the uh, the wildcard playoffs because the Rams win. It ends the four games that, you know, we were talking about. The Colts, like we were saying, going to Pittsburgh to take on the Steelers. Meanwhile, on the other side of the conference, the Bills, who had won their game against the Pats, will be going to San Diego, not LA. San Diego to take on the Chargers. One of those four teams will be representing the AFC in the Super Bowl. Steelers, Colts. Bills Chargers over on the NFC side of things as you know always the four big teams come out to play in this case the big boys are us the Bucks and the Cardinals the, who looked you know they played a spirited game they were tough for Minnesota a little too much for them to handle but they got there um, and then on the other side you got Rams and Cowboys that's another you know like I saying battle of signature 70s teams you know, if the Vikings would have won, that would have been another one. And a couple of newcomers in there to kind of like spice things up a bit, including us. We're going to be going up against the cards next week. If you haven't... Uh, if not, if you haven't, if... Uh, 
Yeah, at this point, obviously, you've watched these games. You know, you, unless you fast-forwarded to all the way to this moment just to see what the matchup was. You, you know, either way, thanks for watching, even if you didn't watch it all. Doesn't matter. You're, you know, you're, you're viewing the damn thing for some reason. One reason or another. That's it for this week. Next week starts the divisional round where we'll take on the Cardinals. We'll see you then.